Hello. My name is Jen, Jen Kalawar. I am a white light Reiki master. Um, and if you're tuning into this, this is about uh, Reiki 2 uh, introduction, uh, what to expect. And I'm having a little computer issues. I'm going to get right out of that. There we go. All right. So if you're here, um, the assumption is that you've already had your Reiki one training and attunement. So this is the next level. It's an advanced level. Um, so I'm just going to walk you through it a little bit, right? And answer any questions you may have. Uh, so before we begin, I'd like to start with a centering meditation, right? So make sure that your feet are planted on the ground. If you're sitting in a chair or if you're on the floor on a yoga mat, um, just sitting down into your, your sits bones, right? So really kind of rooting in, right? And I like to focus on rooting down and lengthening up. So we're not like slouching, right? That kind of kinks up our energy. So we want to be nice and long and tall. Relax your shoulders, relax your jaw. Good. Maybe take a few deep breaths here. And just relaxing your hands into your lap in any way they just naturally fold into your lap. Good. Bring your mental awareness to the soles of your feet. Feel yourself connect to the earth. Now focus on your breath. Feel your lungs as they expand and contract, bringing life-giving oxygen to every cell of your body. Be aware of God's presence within you. Be grateful for this day, for the gift of your life. How are you coming to this day of learning? What is your heart desire for this day, for your ongoing Reiki practice? And take a few more deep breaths. And bring your awareness back into the space and time. Again. So I begin every uh, Reiki training um, with introductions, just going around the room um, to see where you're at, right? Meeting you where you're at is um, a vital, you know, it is priority. You know, because the energy is going to flow how it flows. And I don't direct the energy, right? This is um, uh, divinely orchestrated, right? But this is an attunement. And we talked about this in Reiki 1, whether you take it with me or another teacher. Maybe it's another uh, discipline of Reiki other than white light, which is fine. There are just interpretations of the same uh, energy frequency that we're tuning into. And once you're tuned into it, it's always available to you, right? So that's what we've learned. So now in the second level of Reiki energy, um, and you can take this wherever you were tuned um, in Reiki one, it's fine. The energy is energy. So you're just attuning at a higher level, right? So it's um, a different symbol, right? That you're attuned to. And it is um, it kind of turns the, the light bulb on a little bit brighter, a little higher. So that is the, um, the focus of it. Yes, we do learn symbols because now there's a, a deeper um, connection, right? Uh, you're turning your intuition on a little bit higher, tuning into things. We all have it, right? It's just a, a, a way of tuning into this. And it's um, this frequency, it's benevolent. It's all loving. Um, there is no harm in its existence, right? So it cannot be used nefariously. It's just um, not in the energy. It's absent, 
of it. So it, it's just like, I think of it as pure love, just moving through it. It's coming from the highest source, uh, from our divine creator. And it's given to us to, to use, to, to help ourselves, to um, calm our nervous system, uh, to bring a little bit more relaxation and ease, right? So that our body regulates itself. <laughs> so you don't have to be a, a scientist or a doctor or a nurse or a therapist to understand this because you're human. You live in your vehicle of a body as I do, you know, and this is a beautiful way to like help connecting um, with another person. And it's at a higher level. You notice things more uh, at this level. And um, because it turns on the intuition, um, you might know, just pick up on things a little quicker. I was in a, a Qigong and healing uh, workshop over the weekend. And the, the premise of it was the mind is very, very loud. Like a like a little kid um, in the mall, like even going frantic on shopping sprees or having a tantrum when the store doesn't have what they want, right? And it's just very loud and screaming and eh, all this stuff. And the body uh, whispers, you know. So Reiki is us tuning into the whispers of the body. Right. And to um, facilitate that as a Reiki practitioner, right, to be in that safe space where your client is relaxed enough to receive the Reiki energy through you, not from you. Right. So we have a clear understanding of that. And it just tunes their body into its own healing because the body knows how to heal itself. Um, I'll share a, a story that really makes me look so wise and important. Um, I got a new pair of shoes and they're like these slip on sneakers, right? It has like a sneaker sole to it. And, um, they're like slip on like socks, you know, but I still wear socks with it. Um, but I decided I was rushing around and I didn't want to go upstairs and get a pair of socks. So I'm like, oh, I'll be fine. And just put my shoes on without the socks. And I went for a walk, right? About a two mile walk. And what happened? I got blistered, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, oh, I thought I would be fine. And then I didn't feel it until the next day until it was already apparent. So um, I... It was like, you know what? It's okay. Like at first I was really irritated and annoyed and oh, now this is going to put a damper on all my plans. Um, Cause I was, I had like a whole workout routine that I was adhering to and it was really new and exciting. And now I had this blister on my foot and I can't walk this far. I have to deal with this, you know, and all of these from these stories from the past where I've gotten blisters before from being so incredibly wise. <laughs> So I just loved it, right? I just sent it Reiki and I took care of it. And I'm like, all right, we'll see, you know, when it festers. And I swear in a day, it just became calloused. Like, I don't know if it was in my sleep that um, the, the blister popped, but it's just gone and there's no pain. And it didn't interrupt my physical plans and activities at all. So, um, yeah, the body knows how to heal itself. And I didn't really have to do much except allow it to heal itself and give it the time and space. And I was already sort of planning on this taking time, like longer time than I wanted it to. And once I accepted it, it didn't need to. I was like, okay, you're here. I caused this. So, I'm ready to accept and deal with whatever comes through. And it was like, okay, lesson learned. I don't have to hang out anymore. This is um, the story that I give it anyway. But it just did uh, reiterate to me the 
the wisdom of the body and it knows how to heal itself. And the Reiki energy really just allows that space for the energy flow, you know, to, to um, create that, that healing. So um, I always meet people where I'm, where they are at, you know, what they're dealing with, struggling with, maybe there are um, big, huge things. Maybe it's just a, a curiosity or maybe, um, uh, this has happened before where it, Reiki one training is very introductory and it's just like getting you into, um, the understanding of it working, uh, with the, the chakra energy centers and the, the power of your, your hands, your palms, you know, we have thousands of nerve endings here. So it picks up energy and it's just a matter of tuning into it, right? And you can do this. Um, you know, anytime and anywhere, just like feeling your energy. We did that in Qigong. Um, and it was interesting because we partnered up in uh, this practice and I was just kind of holding energy, you know, with my hands, actually the, my partner's hands, you know, was here and I was just, you know, giving her energy and she was saying, I feel tingling. Ooh, I feel heat. And I'm like, uh-huh. And then she asked me, is this what Reiki's like? And I was like, well, I am a Reiki teacher, but I would say, yeah, what you're experiencing is what my clients experience. It's very similar because it is all energy. Qigong is a system of allowing that energy to flow and, you know, that giving us the, the, the wisdom to um to shift it as needed for example if we are, we're feeling the state of overwhelm or shutdown or the mind is really really loud and the body is like pay attention to me i'm dealing with something right now you know so that is um one of, of the pieces so we do meet um, the spirit guide, there's a meditation that I lead you through. Um, if you've taken anything with one with me, uh, you would have experienced this. Uh, if you're with another discipline, maybe not. Um, but to me, it was really, uh, it was really pivotal for me in my actual, um, process of, of Reiki. You know, I've been doing this. Um, I became a master in 2000. 15, I think. Yeah. And, um, but my first Reiki experience was in 2011. So, and I've been training ever since, like after my first experience, I'm like, I have to give this to other people. Like, this is what I've been waiting for, you know? So, uh, so yeah. Um, then we go over the symbols. So you get a, a power symbol, um, which I use all the time, whether or not I'm giving Reiki, I use it for my own um, personal, just to help me navigate, especially in social situations. But I'll use the symbols to send Reiki energy um, to my food, to my shower, um, to my car. <laughs> um, so I don't send en uh, Reiki energy to another person without their permission. Um, if that person is uh, not capable of giving permission, whether it is an uh, infant um, or someone who can't speak for themselves or someone in a coma or in surgery, then um, if I have permission from the family speaking on their behalf, then I can send energy. Um, so it's very uh, important that we stay with our own integrity when doing our Reiki practices. All right. So, um, but things or situations we can send uh, Reiki energy to. Um, so I was I was out in public in a city environment, and uh, there was an argument that broke out, and I sent. Reiki energy to the ground and to the buildings and then just in the area. So I just sent Reiki in the space 
and allowing that to maybe influence the raised frequency of irritation and just calm it you know um and it, it did it could have gotten worse and instead it just became nothing so um yeah it's very powerful but we need to uh respect the um integrity of each individual's free will um so anyway that is uh the a power symbol that you receive um we go into it and then you receive a, another symbol it's the emotional healing symbol uh which is really good it, it fits in really well with this level of training because you're getting more into uh the emotional aspects and reiki one it's more physical and now in uh reiki two it's more mental emotional right so it's our our thoughts and our feelings attached to the thoughts um when people are going through crisis it, it wrecks havoc on us on uh, so many levels on our nervous system uh our mental processing and then it can you know even get into uh the way our body processes food you know or air and you know energy so reiki is really uh good for the for this good for it isn't even <laughs> the right word it is amazing um for this so uh so you also receive an emotional healing symbol for that and you also receive a absentee symbol so if someone needs reiki and they can't get to you physically you can send them reiki reiki in remotely so there's a whole teaching on that. It's not that hard or difficult or, you know, woo-woo crazy. It's just, you know, like you send a, a prayer to someone with intention, but um, we just, you know, you know, physically send that energy using this symbol and it crosses all through all space and time. So that is uh, the three symbols that you receive. And it's really powerful. Um, at Reiki 2 level, you uh, can be compensated, so you can charge for your services. That's when I started um, offering Reiki, and then very quickly, I wanted to go to the next level and then be able to teach it. Um, so the next level, the third level, that's like the final level of receiving Reiki and uh, being a practitioner, so you're at the highest level um of that reiki light that light bulb is turned all the way up um the only thing is if you want to teach that's all that master means so sometimes i'll just say i'm a reiki teacher rather than a reiki master because um i i just think it's a little bit more appropriate that's the only difference i'm a, a reiki teacher and practitioner um we do go through additional hand positions as well so these advanced techniques um yeah which is is really um sent and using the symbols to send the reiki uh even to the person it doesn't only have to be an absentee but also uh right when the the client is with you on the massage table um yeah so I'm kind of skipping around a little bit, um, but I am following, <laughs> but I get excited and I share a little bit extra stuff. So, um, yeah, since you can get paid for Reiki at this level, I do a little bit of uh, the business of Reiki and some possibilities how you can share your services, um, whether at like a at a health facility. Um, it's more accepted now. Uh, the hospitals where I am uh, near <laughs> do offer Reiki. They offer Reiki for uh, cancer patients and heart patients. I think those are the two approved for that. Um, but yeah, a Reiki uh, practitioner can just come in and offer Reiki to to one of the patients. So it's... Uh, it's really beautiful how uh, accepted and mainstream it is now. 
um, as it should be, you know, uh, Western and, and Eastern medicine, uh, Reiki, as you know, is from, uh, well, it originated in Japan. So I would say, yeah, it's East. So the East and West um, practices uh, coming together. So we have a fullness of, um, of healing. Um, so the business of Reiki, you can do demonstrations, you could do free demonstrations. Um, you can work with uh, different um, therapists, doctors, uh, yoga studios. I offer Reiki um, at, a, at the um, Be Well studio in Morristown and um, healing as well as, as training. Uh, and we talk about pricing, we talk about, you know, being in integrity uh, with our clients, even keeping um, in track of our clients, like what was your experiences with them. So you want them to come back and develop that, that relationship um, as, as you move through uh, their spiritual journey, because they're every, we're all on our own spiritual journey. And once like we kind of open ourselves to uh you know the different um techniques that are available to us and the different modalities that are available to us um then we can kind of open up and things move along with a little bit more ease and a little bit more grace and that's really uh what we're we're looking for in our um and our Reiki practice and, and what we give to our clients. So there is a lot of that, um, that interaction that, that we create together. Um, and I find it vital, like asking all the questions um, and even asking what you might think is a stupid question um, is vital. So my husband, I've been doing this, you know, for over 10 years and he, um, not teaching, but practicing Reiki, um, teaching Reiki is almost 10 years. Oh my goodness, nine years. And, um, my husband, I was doing a Reiki training and he's like, I, I want to do it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like he never expressed interest. I've asked him and he's like, no, 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 you know, and now, uh, he asked to be involved and I'm like, okay. And um, now he is a, a level three Reiki practitioner. So I'm very proud. So it could be anyone, anywhere, you know, or if it's a yes for you and it's your time, um, I'm here for it. I'm definitely here for it. And it's a, a beautiful experience. Each training is different. You know, and I'm not even talking about each level is different. Like each group gathering has its own energy, you know, and it's really um, amazing how, how it flows. And then at the higher levels, maybe noticing it a little bit um, quicker, easier, becomes more obvious. Even having like those shared experiences with the group, I, I always love. So yeah, this is just a general um, introduction to the Reiki level two training. Um, it's my favorite training because so much um, breakthroughs happen um, through a combination of the different components of the training. And, you know, some things may hit you differently. I think my biggest a uh, hit for me that shifted me was the spirit guide meditation. Um, the symbols are also really impactful. They're very simple symbols, you know, and it's just a way for our, our mind to connect to the energy um, and just using it deliberately and purposely. You also at this level um, just kind of exude <laughs> that reiki energy and the more you practice it the more you exude it like it just it is what it is you don't you don't lose it you know so it's always there with you but the more you connect to it the more um apparent it is to you and to everybody else 
So I definitely um, encourage that as well. But one thing about Reiki that I love is you can't do it wrong, mainly because you're not the one doing it. <laughs> so thank thank you to, to our one true God, our creator, who has allowed this into our experience. So it's a little bit, I see it as heaven on earth and that we can extend this out, you know, to our brothers and sisters, um, sending out love and um, a way to connect to each other so that our own healings can begin in our body, in our heart, and in our mind, and in our spirit. So that is what has been the, uh, the, the way in for me, the door that opened for me. I see our, our spiritual connection, our connection to God. It is not just um, vertical, right? I do have that and it's very important to me and that's very sacred. And I, I honor it and respect the sacredness of that um, connection relationship with each individual. Um, and Reiki is a way to extend, to make a, that horizontal line. So we extend that connection out to others and really meeting each person where they're at because they'll have their own frequency and um, you can experience their energy, their frequency shift during a session, which is so beautiful to witness and such an honor to participate in and be a part of, you know, it's like all of these little miracles that are all around us happen all the time. And when we deliberately, you know, walk into that space for, for that to happen, that is um, the, the beauty of this practice. So whether you um, decide just to be more of a receiver or I'm just going to stay at Reiki one, I give it to myself, I give it to my friends, and I'm open to receiving it when I go into a Reiki session, when I feel like I need it, that's where I'm at. And that's great. That's awesome. You know, um, I was there not very long though, because <laughs> I, I had a compelling that was my journey I was a compelling to share it like I want to give this out I want to give it I want to give it um and that's you know a byproduct of my own personal journey so with that um if there's any questions you can always email me or um send me a message through social media however I'm mostly on Facebook um, so that's the easiest way to reach me but also go on to my website navigatelifetransitions.net and um i'd love to connect with you uh yes so thank you so very much for taking this time to listen any other questions i'm here for you and i look forward to seeing you namaste